Former Congressman Joe Walsh is with us a little later to break down the politics and how Vladimir Putin is the real winner in all of this. Now on to the former president, former President Trump. He's learning the hard way that loyalty in politics doesn't last long. He, of course, taught many people that message, and now he's learning it himself. Take, for example, Dr. Oz. When running for the Republican nomination for Senate in Pennsylvania, Dr. Oz's social media was plastered with President Trump everywhere. You can even see before, endorsed by Trump. Well, he won. Within a few days, President Trump was off the Twitter page. Trump's gone. Now Oz wants to thank Pennsylvania as he looks towards November. President Trump isn't mentioned. In the new Republican Party, even Trumpy candidates like Dr. Oz and Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, well, they can now keep Trump at arm's length. Trump's endorsement and campaigning proved key in DeSantis's win four years ago. This time around, DeSantis says he doesn't need it to win re-election come November. Kimberly Leonard writes about Trump and Republican politics and joins us now. Uh, we have written the obituary of President Trump's political life so many times, and every time, though, we've been wrong. That's true. That's true. Uh Former President Trump still has a lot of staying power within the party, and he still remains pretty popular with the base. So uh, there's a lot of hesitancy to write him off completely. You think about, though, that despite the fact that he's not that popular for general election candidates, and there is this distance being kept, especially in swing states, uh, his picks for Senate have done awfully well. Uh, I'm thinking he got it in Georgia. He picked the winner uh, in Ohio. Uh, also backed off Mo Brooks in uh, Alabama. Uh, his track record's pretty good. Uh, why, why this? Why always the rush by the media to say, well, his coattails aren't that big? I think part of it right now really has to do with a lot of what we're seeing from the January 6th hearings. And so there are people wondering, you know, what's going to happen that might be, might deal this blow to Trump, you know, that might make it so that uh, people no longer want to be associated with him. You know, is that pressure campaign that the Democrats putting, uh, having an effect? Is it making Republicans hesitant to uh, be close to him? Uh, I think in the primary, it seems that uh, Republicans are still very much all in favor of you know, getting Trump's endorsement. They worked very hard for it. They uh, previously went to Mar-a-Lago a bunch to try to, you know, kiss the ring and get his support. And uh, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Look forward, though. Uh, obviously, 2022, the, the, mid, the primaries are effectively over. There's a few left, but we're, we're now headed to the general, which means we're already looking to 2024. A new polling out of the University of New Hampshire, Trump DeSantis, 39% say they want DeSantis of New Hampshire voters. Only 37% uh, want Trump, um, which is pretty stunning. Um, it's the first time we've seen somebody beat Trump in a head-to-head -head poll. It is. And I have to say that Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida has been edging in on Trump for a while now. Um, so is he, is he Trump been, without the crazy? <laughs> he has a lot of qualities that are very Trumpian, um, but he also has qualities that have allowed him to sort of stand up as this foil against President Biden. Um, so he was able to sort of offer Florida as a contrast to a lot of what the Biden administration was doing. And it seems like now what, what we're hearing is that he won't be seeking uh, pre former President Trump's endorsement, um, that he would actually like to though do better than Trump did in Florida. Trump won Florida by uh, three points which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually a lot in Florida. Um, and so he seems to have gained a lot of confidence that uh, what he's doing is popular and that he's going to win easily in November. Right. And it's very hard to embrace a guy and say that he's the future of the party and on and on and on and uh, bow down to President Trump when you're running in 2022 for governor. And then you turn around and you challenge him in the primary. Uh, doesn't those, those, those sound bites uh, come back pretty quickly, don't they? They definitely could. And I should add, Governor DeSantis hasn't said that he's running for president, but he's raising so much money and he's often on Fox News and he's, you know, out every single day doing press events, answering questions from reporters, repeating the same talking points that are taking jabs at President Biden. And so that that's what has a lot of people saying, mm, come on, you're looking at 2024.
Right, right. He'd be he'd be dumb not to. He he is the the front runner sans President Trump, and even in New Hampshire, he's now the front runner. So why wouldn't you be raising all that money? This this struck me, and we've talked about this before on the show, but perhaps the split now has never been quite as clear. Uh, between President Trump and the MAGA movement itself, and whether President Trump really controls the MAGA movement. Um, this is Amy Kramer. Uh, she founded Women for Trump. She was at the January 6th rally. Donald Trump is disconnected from his base. Is he disconnected from his base, or did he just identify a movement, latch onto it in 2016, wrote it, and now he has gotten in a different place than the movement is? I think it's that he just has less of a profile day in and day out. And so, you know, he's still doing rallies, he's still doing media interviews, but you compare that to someone like Governor DeSantis, who does press conferences almost every single day in Florida. They get broadcast on Facebook and then the national media picks them up. And so a lot of what he's saying gets headlines, gets attention. Um, you also have the Biden administration going after DeSantis uh, pretty hard in the last couple of weeks too. And so that is what is sort of taking up the oxygen, I think, for a lot of uh, the MAGA base, where mm. you just don't see President Trump as much, but you do see DeSantis. And I've attended some of those rallies in Florida, and I can tell you that DeSantis's name is the one that comes up the most often. Yeah, it certainly does. Real quick, uh, how what happens to tell us whether President Trump uh, still has power in the Republican Party come uh, November, I'm thinking J.D. Vance's Twitter homepage still has President Trump up even after he won uh, the primary. Uh, who, who has to stay close to President Trump? Who can afford uh, to leave him before November? Oh, well, they all seem to think that they have to keep him close. I mean, you see in the House especially, they've really, you know, catered to uh, former President Trump. Yeah. The one thing that I will say about President Trump is that he is really good at cutting opponents down to size. And so if he were to, you know, say something about DeSantis that really catches on or one of or some one of the other candidates who might irk him, I think that would be really telling um, as to how, mm -hmm. you know, the MAGA movement would then respond. You know, would they step back a little bit? Would they say, oh, no, it's no big deal. Um, but we've seen Trump attack so many other Republicans. He is able to make these comments stick. And so to me, it's really about looking at the criticism that he wages and what effect that has. Yeah. And you, you think about this. Uh, President Trump went through the Republican field in 2016, like a combine through a cornfield in Iowa, uh, in Iowa. And now all of a sudden uh, we're at where he is, um, we're where we are. Hey, it was great talking. Thanks, Kimberly. This was fun. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, by now, thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.